Hi everyone, welcome to Eco Learning Classes. This is Professor Geeta Mahesh. Dear students, in this video, we will be learning functions of money. So before that, let us start with the meaning of money. What do you mean by money? Money is anything which is generally accepted as a medium of exchange. At the same time, it acts as a measure and store of value. So that means anything, money can be anything but it should be accepted as a medium of exchange. So it is generally accepted. Each and everyone has accepted as a medium of exchange. At the same time, it acts as a convenient unit of account. You can maintain an account only when we, we use a common unit to measure the value of different goods and services. So here money, it has to be act as a medium of exchange and at the same time it should act as a measure of value. According to F. A. Walker, money is what money does. You know what money is doing. So that is what he is saying that a money is what money does. That means money will act as a measure of value, medium of exchange, store of value, transfer of value and standard of deferred payment. So all these functions will be performed by money and because of that reason in simple words he defined money is what money does. The students the functions of money can be classified into two division. One is primary function another one is secondary function. Primary function basic functions of money. Money act as a medium of exchange and measure of value. What are the secondary functions? Secondary functions means it act as a standard of deferred payment, store of value and transfer of value. Dear students, here you can see the functions of money is broadly classified by Professor Kinley and he classified the functions of money into primary functions and secondary functions. Dear students, now let us discuss primary functions in detail. The first one is medium of exchange. Why money acts as a medium of exchange means it comes in between two commodities. Under barter system, we exchange commodity with the commodity, but now money comes in between these two commodities. The commodity is exchanged with the money and with that money, whatever you want, you are going to buy. So for this function, we call money acts as a medium of exchange. Here you can see money helps in buying and selling of goods and services. So you can sell a commodity for in exchange of money and with the money, again, you can buy a commodity. And next one, it acts. Uh, as it is commonly accepted as a measure of value. So easily you can exchange uh, goods with the money and with money you can buy a goods. And at the same time you can see dear students, as money comes in between two commodities, it separates buyers and sellers. So it is going to separate buyers as well as sellers. That means, uh, the seller and uh, buyer can do their activities independently. No need to depend on others. Okay. And here money gives the power to purchase things that satisfies a human want. What do you mean by that? With the money you can buy a goods and services. That means money has a purchasing power. Why money has a purchasing power means it is generally accepted. So it has that power to buy goods and services which satisfies a human wants. Money reduces the time and energy spent in the barter system. As 100% dear students here, money is going to reduce the energy as well as time spent in the barter system. Assume that you are the producer of potato and you need a rice. So you have to go in search of a person who buys your potato and ready to sell rice. For example, if you come to me 
and if I am uh, produced ragi, then if you are going to exchange with the ragi, no, you want rice. So you will be keep on searching with uh, those farmer who has produced the rice and at the same time that the producer of rice should need a potato then it becomes a very difficult so that we call it as the problem of double coincidence of want so at a time you have to find a person who is going to buy your product and at the same time you should be in a position to sell what you need to buy otherwise it becomes very complicated uh, otherwise you will be keep on searching for that person who has produced that commodity which you want and ready to buy what you have produced the second function is measure of value or unit of measure dear students when you go to market each and every goods and services are measured in terms of money which we call it as price which we call it as price that means when you go to market and you want to buy any commodity then the value of that good is expressed in terms of money which we call it as price here you can see value of each good and service is expressed as its price and it serves as a unit of account so it becomes very easy for you to maintain account of uh, revenue and expenditure so measure of value and unit of measure will help us it is makes us to maintain the business accounts you can see here we can maintain a business accounts because each and every product and services are measured in the single unit and it facilitate us to maintain the business accounts as here it acts as a unit of measure that means we use a single unit to measure the value of different goods and services see here expressing the value of goods and services in a single unit that is price it becomes very easy for us to find out the exchange ratio between them for example if the price of pen is 10 rupees and the price of book is 50 rupees how will you find out the exchange rate between these two the price of book is 50 rupees and the price of each pen is 10 rupees so how many pens you need to give in order to uh, buy a book means that is 5 pens 5 into 10 50 5 into 10 is equal to 50 so when you give 5 pens then the value of book is equal to 50 so definitely you can find out a exchange ratio between these two now let us discuss secondary functions what are the secondary functions in the secondary function first one is standard of deferred payment we mean by standard of deferred payment we mean by deferred payment deferred pay payments is nothing but a future payments so money can be used for future payments like if you have borrowed are loans lending uh, interest payment and even you take a good example salary the whole month you will be working after a month end of the month you are going to receive a payment from the first day of month till the end of the month you will be working without a, a money and you are ready to accept after a month then this we call it as uh, deferred payment and even when uh, uh, because of this uh, st standard of deferred payment or future payment uh, it is possible or it facilitated us to undertake lending borrowing activities it become a very easy for us to lend and borrow as the value of money remains constant the next one is store of value see here money acts as a store of value if you observe the barter system under barter system the perishable items cannot be stored for long time and after a few days it is going to deteriorate and lose its value but if you sell all those uh, uh, 
perishable items or any goods and services in the market and convert into money as money is a durable product then the value of your produced product is stored in terms of money without any loss so people save money to meet unforeseen contingencies the wealth can be easily stored in the form of money without any lack in its value for future uh, contingencies or uh, future any problems are there and if i am a producer of potato can i uh, store potato for future benefit that uh, after future uh, in the future i am going to get a retirement so i need to keep is it possible to store in term uh, in terms of uh, goods and services no it is highly impossible now whenever you are able to produce and render service render and convert into uh, money and that money can be stored that is what they are saying and at the same time when you deposit in the bank in the form of savings we can also earn interest on it so money is also income earning asset when it is deposited in the banks or invested on uh, shares debentures definitely you will earn income so because of all this reason we say money acts as a store of value the third one is transfer of value with the help of money the asset or wealth can be transferred from one place to another place or it can be transferred from one person to another person let us take one example here is a person who is a owner of this land and he is going to sell this land to this person for dollar 1 lakh so in our example what i told so he is going to sell this land for 1 lakh dollar he got a job in the city now he want to buy a house there but he need a 80000 dollars now he cannot shift the land from his locality to city where he is working for that purpose what he will do he can exchange to money so he will sell that land and use the money to buy a house see with a dollar 80000 he is going to buy a property so he is transferring the value of land in the village to city by by medium of exchange with the help of money there he is going to sell that land for money and uses the same money to buy a house near his office or wherever he got a job dear students if you like please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you so much